if you look at it, is that those people who do not do anything much, who do not do chemotherapy much, they survive. They survive. So don't need to be scientific about it. You just count how many people survive. Enough lah, cukup lah. Now, here is a case, a very sad case. Breast cancer, and she's 65 years old, not like 80. Tumor, 3.8 cm. Besar sedikit lah. So generally, if you have anything big like that, they will see you must chemo first to shrink the tumor so that we can put on your breast. That's what the standard procedure is. So there it is, she is Mewah sedikit, went to Singapore Buat chemotherapy Berapa kali? Sebelas, sebelas kali Is he six cycle? Okay, that's all Five cycle, eleven cycle in Singapore Nothing happened Susah Came back To Kuala Lumpur And she was asked to do radiation Thirty-six times And take Cyclophosphamide, oral drug, some more. It did not work as well. I am not work out. Now, there is a new bullet, the new drug that you cannot find in this country yet, but you can buy from Singapore. So she flew to Singapore to buy that drug. A lot of money. She bought the drug, injected in her three times. Still cannot work, fail. Then what happened? They gave you the normal Zemza and Cisplatin. That is normal. Everybody get it. What happened? Four times. They work. Lepas they work, they give the Loda. Okay? Oral. And you know what is the Loda I'm going to do to you? And in August 25th, not long ago, she died. I'm going to ask you one question. If you have a lump in your breast, 19 months later you die One and a half years you die There are people who don't do anything You don't die with that thought of <laughs> What happened? What happened? I ask you, trying to ask you to think Okay I'm going to ask you this Let us use common sense Let us not Sit in the box and only learn what we learn in school. When I teach in university, I tell my students, what we teach you are all rubbish actually anyway. <laughs> okay? But you have to do it. You have to do it. Because you have to pass the examination. My son also, do a lot of pathway. Oh, macam, macam. He's going to get his PhD very soon. Okay? <laughs> that is part of academic education. But in real life, it is different. So I'm going to ask you to sit back. Sit back and relax and ask it. Think and use your common sense. Okay. Yeah, some of these people will tell me. Okay. Some of my patients say, if they tell the doctors, all the good cases, don't tell me, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Say, tak mau tahu. What, what you do is okay. Go earn a drink, but don't have to tell me anything. Is that education? Okay. Another one is this. They will tell, Christio, you only tell all the bad things only. Not too bad lah, because everybody who, who got bad things all come and see, tell me one. All the good things they will come and tell me, so I only read the bad things. But, remember this, there is a silver lining in it. There is some education. You cannot learn anything if you don't want to admit your failure. If you, don't, you do not learn anything if you want to accept and learn from your failures. Correct or not? Are you getting angry with me? Never mind. But I'm going to tell you that we learn from both from our success and both from our failures. So when I write something, I'm not just trying to be at war with doctors or anything, but I'm just trying to put things in order so that we can see both sides, so that we can improve. Why the lady died? You know why they died? They give chemo, chemo. But that's standard practice. Nobody can blame. But remember, read this book. It's a homeopathy. Uh, expert at the same time is a medical doctor. He wrote this book, Compassion Oncologist. And what he say? Death from chemotherapy is acceptable. Acceptable to the doctor, lah, not your, your father and your mother. That's not acceptable to now. It's acceptable. It is a norm in medicine. Nah, begitu. Hantar pergi doctor, kalau mati pun never mind, it's acceptable. Mom. <laughs> okay. Oncologist is truly shooting in the dark. 
they really don't know. When they shoot you, really, they don't know what's going to happen. Except that way. And he is an oncologist. He's telling you. The hope is that chemotherapy will kill the cancer before it kills the patient. Huh, funny. <laughs> okay, what's the next slide? Huh. Deborah Davis. Now she's a very famous professor of Philadelphia. She wrote this book, The Secret War of Cancer. Now, if you go to a war, you conduct a war, you fight the wrong battle. Suicide, say not. First, with the wrong weapons. And with the wrong general, with the wrong leaders, you think you're going to win. That's what she said. So, the cancer war that we are fighting today is using the wrong bullet, it is the wrong war, the wrong concept, and then led by the wrong general. Too bad. Okay. Now, ah, this one, I do not know how many doctors even today know this result. This just came out. This is a research result from Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center. I think my son also right on that. Okay? Now, what did he say? They have found out that actually chemotherapy you put into the patient, it makes the cancer more aggressive. Alama, chemotherapy induces healthy cell to release WNT16B protein that will interact with the nearby tumor cells and causes them to grow, to invade, and to resist the therapy. And what does he say? Chemotherapy is a cancer, cancer causing protocol. It is not a cancer treatment protocol. Siapa kata itu? Fred Hutchinson research in Seattle. So, apa ini? What do you call scientific? Go back and think about it. I'm not me saying this. Okay, what's the next one? This one is a professor from Michigan University. Do you know today how many people got involved in cancer? First thing is advanced thing, very expensive, 10,000, 8,000, satu kali injection. Everybody got it. I got one fellow who came in, 100,000, habis. Then after doing this, got puncture, uh, got holes in the stomach. Okay, this one they will give it all the time. Now, the research has just found out that Avantin, when added to chemotherapy, maybe it shrink, it shrink, so everybody's happy. But after that, it will make the cancer cell, the cancer stem cell, reproduce more. And that will make cancer more aggressive. Avastin is a drug that's been developed to try to choke, choke off the blood supply of tumors. It's been used to treat breast cancer, and initially it looked like the results were promising. The women had a delay in the time the tumor progressed. However, it was found that the women didn't live any longer. And what we discovered was that Avastin and similar drugs like sunitinib actually increase the tumor cancer stem cells. This is a component of tumors, which are the seeds of the tumor, and actually fuel the tumor and make it aggressive, grow, and metastasize. They found out Avastin and Sutan. You know, today they are prescribing Sutan. If you have kidney cancer, they give you Sutan. You know how much it costs? 20000 per month. It never cured. And here it is, a professor telling you that taking Sutan makes it worse. How can it be scientific? Okay. This is a professor. He's written in the medical journal. He says this. Assisting evidence suggests that current cancer treatment modalities may also have a cancer-promoting effect on the patient. You go and see doctor, you think that they will kill your cancer, it ends up as it's making more cancer for you. All right? Surgery, irradiation, chemotherapy, immunotherapy can stimulate tumor growth, can encourage metastatic spread, can decrease the survival of patient in certain groups. Now, ini bukan Christio yang kata. When I say anything, it's all based on evidence by medical doctors themselves. The trouble is, they don't teach you in medical in school. So you don't know. Maybe you have to go to Christio school to know this. Okay. 
This is a, read, a book written by Barbara Joseph. He, she is a medical doctor and she got breast cancer. She got breast cancer and she wrote this book. We are being misled by the medical approach to illness that worships the magic bullet of surgery, radiation and chemotherapy. This is a medical doctor telling people about this. Now, what's the next one? All right, this is the best to me. She is the top breast cancer specialist in the world. Okay, Susan La, very famous lady from University of California. She said this, listen to that. This is an individual journey. If you have a cancer, this is an individual journey. And it is unpredictable. We all desire magic, but there's no magic. You think you go and see doctor, he give you a magic bullet. No magic bullet here. <laughs> she tell you there is no right or wrong way to treat breast cancer. You go to oncology today, what do they say? They tell you, chemo, radiotherapy, blah, blah. And sometimes they ask you, you young, you want Mercedes Benz one or you want Proton Saga one? How much you want to pay? And some they will ask you, you want this stuff or you want the red one or the blue one? How the patient know how to do it? But it, they behave as if they have got a magic bullet. But it is not. There is no right or wrong way to treat breast cancer. What happens to you is 100% yours regardless of the statistics. Putting together your own personal prescription for the treatment of healing is ultimately your best approach. You and you alone decide what treatment and what is good for you. Alright, that is her advice. And that comes to the best surgeon for breast cancer in the world today. Okay.